Greetings, my warriors. This is Blackhawk SC. So last time, uh, just a few, maybe about a month or two ago, I did a video on um, an underused mech in the game right now, uh, which is the Awesome 8T. So I want to do another video that's similar, um, and this time this is going to be about the Cataphract 1X. <clears throat> So the Cataphract 1X, obviously you don't really see them very much uh, in the game right now. Um, and I'll explain why later on, but um, the w one thing I wanted to note about the Cataphract 1X is it's actually it's one of the first mechs that I did a guide in uh, back in 2014. And, um, you know, back then uh, the game was significantly different and, um, you know, my knowledge of the game was... Um, not as good at that point. So I think, you know, it's worthwhile f for these two reasons to actually go back and revisit the Cataphract 1X, um, maybe a little bit for nostalgia reasons and, um, you know, somewhat just to, uh, you know, play and showcase a mech that really you don't see um, very much in the game anymore. Now, back in 2014, um, the Cataphract and the 1X is probably one of the better inner sphere heavies um, but things have changed since then uh, we've introduced at the 70 tons uh, the grasshopper and the warhammer so the grasshopper has um, jump jets as well as better hitboxes and similarly the warhammer also has better hitboxes when i say better hitboxes that means it's not as broad as um, you see this Cataphract 1X is on the surface, so it's much less surface area to hit. And they both have higher mounted um, hard points. And so at the 70, even at the 70 tonners, um, the Cataphract 1X, it, the Cataphracts in general are really losing out to uh, the competitors there. Uh, at the 65 tonner, when you go down a little bit, the 65 ton level, you have the Jaeger mechs, which are you know, arguably better than the Cataphracts uh, in general because of their high ballistic mounts. And at the 75 tons, you have uh, the Black Knights, which is probably one of the strongest uh, mechs in the game right now. So, you know, at the, the, between the 65 and the 75 ton range, the Cataphract is relatively weaker, but it doesn't mean that, um, you know, the Cataphract is a, quote-unquote, mm, a very bad mech. Um, but, so, but just compared with the rest of the competition, it's just not where it is ideally. So before we actually get to the build that I want to show you, this is the original build that um, I, ha I made the guide in. Um, it's essentially uh, 5 medium lasers and AC-20, which I called the Super Hunchback. So here's the build um, in its entirety. Um, well, I adjusted the armor values a little bit from my original build, but this is basically the the weapon loadout that it had. And if you look at the quirks that PGI gave to it, you got the acceleration deceleration rate, so it's it's more agile than uh, most other heavies in this game. Uh, look at that, 45% acceleration deceleration rate. Got pretty decent structure quirks on the CT, the left torso. You got good shield arms um, that can take a lot of damage, and you know you got the ballistic cooldown energy energy heat generation quirks, which increases uh, DPS when you get into get into that brawl. The laser duration obviously will dec will help concentrate the damage of the medium lasers. So you can see kind of that um, you know PGI is sort of intending for this to be like an energy plus ballistic brawler. Um, and I think th this build is still going to work fine um, in the solo queue. However, in my opinion though, the AC-20 SRM Brawler is going to be a lot stronger and have much better DPS than, you know, an energy AC-20 Brawler. So, you know, I've played the kind of the energy Brawler, AC like the energy ballistic Brawler style on the, um, the boar's head um, before, and I didn't quite think it was very it was okay, but it just wasn't um, as strong as like an AC-20 SRM brawler. So um, you can still try something like this, but probably if you there's better options um, in the solo queue. So here's another option um, uh, for the Cataphract 1X. Um, and this is probably an option that I would have taken back in 2000, 
2015, like like late to mid 2015. Um, back then, the meta was a lot, a little bit longer range than what it is today. Um, so because of the clan, ER medium laser kind of made a lot of the engagements occur at the 500 to 400 meter range, so and maybe a little bit beyond. And so the large, large laser Gauss rifle um, build, and especially it's before the Gauss rifle nerf, um, that was, you know, the that combination was pretty strong uh, for IS. Um, definitely not as strong as like the clan version, but um, still um, pretty decent. Uh, you had the XL engine and with the Gauss rifle on the torso, so it's a little bit risky, but uh, the offensive capability um, was pretty strong. But now that the meta has gotten a lot uh, shorter range, and uh, maybe you know we're talking about the 350 to 400 meter range now, that where you see a lot of engagements take place, and with the Gauss rifle nerf, um, this is uh, still a fun build, and again, it can work, but probably not the one that I will recommend. This is the last build that I wanted to talk about before we get into the build that I really wanted to showcase. Um, so I think this build is um, much more suitable uh, to today's uh, metagame than uh, the two previous builds that, I sh that I've shown. So as I mentioned earlier, a lot of the engagement is happening at that 352 to 400 meter range. And in that range, the large pulse laser, the Intersphere large pulse laser is one of the best uh, weapons, if not the best weapon in the solo queue uh, currently. Um, so we're going to be using, um, so our primary weaponry is going to be the three large pulse lasers. And we're going to use that AC-10 to supplement that uh, large pulse laser, uh, those those large pulses. Uh, you, We remember that Ghost Heap starts at four uh, with the large pulses, so having the AC-10 there we can deliver an alpha strike without uh, incurring ghost heat. Um, with the AC-10, we're actually going to be using that. Uh, what's going to be really helpful for it is the ballistic velocity quirk. So the ballistic velocity quirk is going to make this AC-10 bullet um, a lot more accurate at those ranges. Um, and you know, you you really don't want to try to use that the AC-10 beyond those ranges because it really becomes inaccurate. The ballistic cooldown is going to give you. Um, Good DPS is going to supplement that DPS uh, at that mid-range. Energy cooldown, energy heat generation is going to also help um, with DPS at that range. And the laser duration is going to help um, concentrate damage uh, in a smaller location. Additionally, the structure quirks will help us take that XL engine and make uh, side torso destruction less likely. So um, if you can afford the C-Bills, um, if you want to try this build, uh, do take that XL engine with you. Uh, it's going to give you that better speed and better cooling. All right, so the downsides of this is that you're kind of working with three different reticles um, in some ways. So your three large pulse lasers um, are in different locations, and if you have arm lock off, then you kind of have to make sure that the large pulse the large pulse on your torsos and the right arm large pulse um, ideally is lined up in the same location it has you know it has to converge in that same location which takes time and if the target is moving then you're gonna have to adjust that AC10 shot uh, to lead that target a little bit um, so you know, um, so it makes it a little bit more difficult to play, and that's actually one of the reasons why I think it's kind of a little bit more fun, because um, it's slightly more challenging than the build that I wanted to show. Um, again, I played this build before I in a solo queue. I, l I actually like it, um, and I would suggest trying it out, but you know, the purpose of the video is to show a build that I think works the best uh, for the Cataphract 1X in the solo queue. So keep this in mind and uh, you know if you want to try it out, go ahead and do it. And finally, we come to the build that I wanted to actually show, um, the four large pulse laser uh, build. So it could be a little bit boring but because you see large pulse lasers on a lot of industry builds right now, but I think that this is the probably the best build for the Cataphract 1X in the solo queue. 
Now, we talked about the three large pulse AC10 build uh, just previously, and it actually shares a lot of the same um, design principles as uh, the earlier build that we talked about. So we have the XL engine here, which will give us, number one, uh, more heat sinks and higher speed. Um, and uh, because of the, um, the side torso uh, structure quirks, then it makes taking the XL engine slightly safer. Uh, now you could go down to a standard engine, but I personally would not recommend it here because um, you will tr have to drop four double heat sinks and you lose a lot of speed. And so like a lot of people, they tend to take, uh, they tend to take standard engines even when they can afford the XL engine because uh, you know you can sometimes have that, sh that shield side. And I can understand that, uh, that belief, um, but <coughs> you're really giving up um, you know, a lot of DPS and you're giving up speed, which actually is probably the most important tool for your survival. I mean, if you can't move out of a, a bad position, then uh, regardless of whether you can shield with that one side or not, you're, you're probably going to die uh, soon anyway. So, um, and also increases your offensive capabilities. And if you think about it, like, your best defense is to actually just kill the mechs that were that are threatening you anyways right so um just uh if you want go ahead and try the standard engine but i think uh for maybe players who are maybe more experienced uh you know the xl engine is going to do better for you uh so as compared with the previous slush pulse uh, ac10 build um your this is a little bit simpler to play because you actually only have two reticles to work with, the torso, the one on the torso lasers and then on the right arm. Um, to be aware, of course, that the right arm, one of the right arm lasers is fairly low mounted, so you might actually, uh, you might actually clip um, terrain with one or more of the large pulse lasers, so make sure you, if you're doing a, you know, rich, if you're actually rich peaking, make sure you get clearance to fire off those um, well, if it's safe for you, it's safe enough for you to do that, then make sure you have enough clearance for your two large pulses. Um, even when you're corner peeking, sometimes uh, there's cases where you know, especially that lower large pulse laser will end up clipping terrain. So just make sure you know where approximately, uh, relative to your cockpit, where those lasers are. Now, <clears throat> so with the large pulses, um, the main advantage with the large pulses over um, say other lasers is really the duration. So we got to make sure we take advantage of that uh, duration uh, advantage. Uh, make sure we aim uh, before we fire it off. Otherwise, you know, you, you can't waste damage. Um, obviously, you know, this laser duration quirk is there to help. All right, so it's really not difficult to play. Um, you're kind of, you can poke a little bit. Um, you can poke a little bit, uh, especially with the range range module here. You can poke like about 400, 500 with pretty good damage. Uh, you can poke all the way out to 600 and do still do some decent damage. So um, this build, I think, will be good, um, especially useful kind of mid match where the where the battle gets uh, around to that 400 meter range, 500 meter range. Um, you know. At that point, you're going to be doing a good amount of DPS due to the amount of heat sinks and the heat efficiency of the large pulse lasers. Um, you don't have to necessarily sit in the back and then wait for. You can actually, you know, wait for the enemy to just, uh, you know, come push you and wait for others to, um, you know, take that engagement because you can. The corner poking capabilities of the cataphract is actually not too bad, so. Um, you know, go make those early pokes, um, especially if you have good terrain that covers your left side. All right, um, so let's actually go and uh, go into a gameplay video, and we can see how this thing, how this thing can play. All right, so we're on Caustic Valley, and I think um, you know, Caustic is a good way to demonstrate um, how this pure energy boat can work on a hot map. Caustic is also kind of nice because if you do the right side rotation, that happens very frequently on Caustic, 
uh, on this map, like the corner poking capabilities of the Cataphrag 1X is very easily demonstrated. So early on in the match, we we kind of have an idea of where you know if you play this map enough, you know kind of where the enemy is spawning. So we're going to be aggressive, try to play a little bit aggressively, and try to get in those early pokes using terrain as cover. We get a blip out there, so we see it's about a thousand meters. So we're not going to engage that right now. Uh, we have another target over at uh, over there that's six hundred away, five hundred away. So we're going to start engaging that stalker at six hundred, getting in those free pokes, uh, just free some free damage on that stalker, and another on the marauder. And we can't push any further because you see we don't have um, our blue. Our blue guy, blue uh, Doritos are not pushed up all the way yet, so we're not, we can't go too far out in the open. So we came here back to where we have a little bit of support. Um, we did see earlier that um, there were some mechs okay, over at Theta, acquired. so we did a little okay, bit of a acquired. heat vision check to see, make sure we didn't miss any mechs across the smoke. Okay, somebody shot down our UAV okay, over there. Acquired. See over here. Now we alpha strike. We can alpha strike in those cases because um, we have that aim. We have good aim. Okay. We see a blip over seismic bit blip over at Delta Three. So we're gonna move out. Um, target yeah. acquired. New yeah, target seismic acquired. is super important if you can take it <laughs> after a radar depth. Uh, so yeah, uh, you can do a. You can t eat the ghost heat New from an alpha strike. Acquired. If you have believe you have enough time to cool down, which we did in that case, so we're using the high mounts there to do a little poke. See, we're aiming before we shoot. We can't. We don't just shoot as soon as we see the target. Target destroyed. Okay. Target acquired. New target acquired. So that's just a good habit to get into when you're, especially when you're playing like pulse lasers. Um, just take take that extra half second and aim if you can. If they're not looking at you, especially, uh, just go ahead and then uh, train your reticle on that where exactly you want to uh, to shoot at and and then shoot. Okay, so um, the cicada here, we were trying to get its CT because. The cicada has a fairly large CT, but as soon as we got uh, target info, we went for the legs because its legs were a little bit weaker than. Its legs were weaker at that point in CT. Okay, so we're making sure we're um, using our range slightly, you know, at that. 400, 350 range. So, uh, so we we were trying to position more within the remaining members of our team uh, and not be on the edges over there. Okay. So we're careful not to get into the caldera here. Uh, the caldera, caldera and caustic is going to decrease your heat dissipation. So I'm a little bit acquired. off on my aim there, but I was trying to shoot for that CT. They're all on beta right now. It's warming it. So the Marauder, we might want to tr try to take out its other side torso. Heat level critical. It's missing a side torso already. There you go. That, that other side torso Target went off. Evan Jaguar CT is very big, so aim for the CT on the Evan. Again, we're tr trying to make sure you know when we're turning. Uh, we're, the reason why we're turning is be to make sure that there is nothing coming up behind us. Uh, even though when we're firing, when we're we're fi we're you saw me kind of like fire and then turn, both to twist damage and to s look at whether there's um, something on the other side that I couldn't see. Okay, and we're staying out of the center caldera as much as possible. 
New target acquired. Heat level critical. Target destroyed. So even though there was um, other mechs shooting at me, we wanted to finish off that urban mech. New target so. acquired. Target acquired. So uh, I I recommend you know a lot of players they switch targets uh, when they play. Try not to switch targets unless there's a very good reason to do that. Um, it's better to kill off a mech than to spread damage across multiple mechs. Yeah, we saw the UAV earlier, but it wasn't a big deal. So we now we take off the UAV. Lost a lot of cats. Heat level critical. Target destroyed. New target acquired. Lima last one, Lima Lima. Heat level critical. SM oxide. Water. So this oxide actually eventually wins them the game. <laughs> so from caps. Um, yeah, it was <laughs> it was apparently like really difficult to kill. Um, we lost from caps, but it's okay. I mean, I want to. Okay. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, we just want to demonstrate sort of the the fighting capabilities, not the capping capabilities of the Cataphract One X. Um, so hopefully this is a good demo of what it can do. So hopefully this is a, a good an overview of the Cataphract 1X and especially of this build. Uh, hopefully it also encourages some of my viewers to try out the Cataphract 1X. Again, set the right expectation for the Cataphract 1X when you play it because it's again it's not one of the better best uh, inner sphere heavies but it does its job um, well enough and it can it can uh, influence a game significantly uh, as we just saw as, as long as you play it correctly and uh, you have the right build for it um, so if you like um, more of these kind of underused mechs in the games right now like ga guides for the underused mechs um, like the video and then check out the rest of my channel um, I probably will be doing more of these um, you know uh, based on feedback uh, thanks for watching, and uh, like this vi if like if you like this video, um, subscribe to my channel, and then give me a like. Thanks very much. Goodbye.